Hey there, it's Dr. Huffstater here again, and today I wanted to do a real quick video. I've had a raft of these uh, thyroid patients that have come into the office lately. We've had probably, oh, I don't know, it seems like there have been three or four in the last week that have come in uh, hypothyroid patients who've, who've, who've looked for help with their thyroid problem. And so I've had this conversation with patients ad nauseum here lately, it seems like, and with their medical doctors, because uh, some of these, actually all three of them now that I think about it, are taking a synthetic thyroid supplement. And so I've had to t have this conversation with their medical doctors too. And it's a conversation maybe you might be interested in, so, so I want to I fill you in on some, some of the things that can change with, with uh, the thyroid tests when you use uh, natural types of approaches to dealing with thyroid function. And to do that, let me first give you a little bit of background because I want you to understand what the thyroid tests are. Uh, and then I want to explain to you why some of these tests can change and why it can cause a little bit of a, a, little bit of a panic on the part of the person who, who's ordering the tests unless they understand what's happening. Uh, and so when you usually, typically when you run a thyroid panel, what you're doing is you're testing three different hormones. You're testing two hormones that come from the thyroid gland itself and then you're testing one hormone that doesn't actually come from the thyroid gland, but it comes from the pituitary gland, the, the master control gland for the whole endocrine system that's found deep, deep in the brain, right at the base of the brain. And when you test the thyroid hormones, you're testing thyroid hormones. And, and there are uh, a couple of them. Actually, there's more than a couple, but we're not, I don't want to get too much into that. That's not that important. For our conversation right now, the hormone that we're interested in is the one that comes from the pituitary gland, the one deep in the brain. And that's a hormone called TSH, which stands for thyroid stimulating hormone. And what does the thyroid stimulating hormone do? It stimulates the thyroid gland. And so what happens is when the thyroid gland decreases its function, if for whatever reason, it's, there's an autoimmune disease, there's malnutrition, there's a subluxation, and the, the thyroid gland produces less thyroid hormone, the, the, the pituitary gland will increase its secretion of thyroid stimulating hormone to get the thyroid to, to, to whip itself into shape. And, and often, thyroid stimulating hormone is used to monitor the effectiveness of uh, thyroid replacement therapies that are, that are medically uh, prescribed, allopathically prescribed. Now, <clears throat> here's what we do, because we don't deal with any of that. We don't try to replace any hormone. We try to get that thyroid working the way it's supposed to to begin with. And the way we do that is through adjusting the spine and removing whatever subluxations are particularly in the lower cervical spine and the top of the thoracic spine between the shoulder blades, but also to provide the appropriate nutrients that the thyroid gland needs. And the number one nutrient that the thyroid gland needs, there are several of them, but the number one most important mineral that the thyroid gland needs, and some of you may already know, is the mineral iodine. In fact, thyroid hormone is about 90% iodine by volume. And we give people iodine to treat their thyroid gland, among other things, but iodine plays an important role. Now, what we want to do with that iodine is saturate the thyroid gland with iodine. We want that uh, thyroid gland to just be dripping with iodine. And in order to get that iodine into the thyroid gland, it doesn't just work its way in there. It doesn't just sort of doesn't sort of just soak it up like a sponge. No, it has to. It, it takes energy. It takes your body energy to take that that iodine and transport it across the membranes into the gland, into the thyroid gland. And it does that along with sodium in a process which is known as the sodium iodine symport system. They they import together, and so they're symported is the, is the term that's used for it. Well, what is the that's all that's all regulated and stimulated by a, a particular hormone. And what hormone does that? TSH. And so what can happen is this: a, a medical doctor who who deals with uh, prescribing thyroid uh, hormone. Um, synthetic thyroid hormone to deal with hy hypothyroid function will see an elevated TSH and they will suspect the thyroid of underfunctioning and so they'll give thyroid hormone to bring the TSH down. And it does bring the TSH down. It doesn't do anything about the function of the thyroid, but it brings the TSH down. <clears throat> Often what happens when people who go come under care here is we'll put them on iodine and what will happen to the TSH? It will start to go up and it goes up because the body's trying to get iodine into the thyroid gland. The thyroid hormones stay stable, but TSH elevates. And I've run into it several times where the TSH starts elevating, and sometimes it can elevate way up there. 
and their, the patient's MD or the prescribing doctor gets all in a, excited about it uh, until I explain to them, no, it's, it, it's TSH that is responsible for stimulating the iodine sodium symport system and because this person's uh, uh, supplementing with, with uh, iodine, nutritional iodine, their body's trying to get that iodine into the thyroid gland and it requires TSH to do that. Uh, once that it's explained to them and they and they realize why that happens, they're uh, invariably they're cool with it. Um, but it takes that explanation. Some of you, and I, you know, usually now always when I put patients on iodine, I explain to them that this could possibly happen. But some of you out there may be using iodine to uh, deal with your thyroid problem because you you read about it in a blog somewhere or you read about it and. Uh, the prescription for nutritional health or something like that, uh, but it didn't give you the background on what could happen to these hormones. And you're testing your hormones and you're getting all freaked out because I, because TSH levels are increasing while you're doing the iodine and you're still feeling better. Hey, look, don't get worried. TSH levels can elevate and they can stay elevated for as long as about 16 months in some cases I've seen. Not usually that long, but it can last that long. And all that's there to do is just to move that iodine into the thyroid gland don't fret about it. It's normal biology, and uh, that TSH should come down once that thyroid starts working effectively. I hope this was helpful, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.